Welcome to Jambar TV. On this week's episode, NPR writer and radio host Corva Coleman visits campus. Members of the YSU Women's Club raise funds at a local winery. And lightweight boxing champ Ray Boom Boom Mancini returns to Youngstown where it all began. All this and more on Jambar TV. Welcome to this week's episode of Jambar TV. I'm Amanda Jorns. And I'm Thomas Kushner. A lot of things happening at Youngstown State this week, including boxing champ Boom Boom Mancini visiting campus. We also had a really exciting week with sports, especially men's and women's basketball. But Ray Boom Boom Mancini wasn't the only influential person making an impact on campus this week. That's right. NPR writer and host Corva Coleman made a Youngstown appearance to celebrate NPR affiliate WYSU's 50th anniversary. Coleman discussed accuracy and her role in journalism during a lecture at St. John's Episcopal Church. She offered her experience and insight to journalism and communication students. A new program at YSU can now help students with physical, mental, cognitive, or learning issues. YSU recently partnered with Ohio's College to Careers program, bringing a disability counselor to campus. YSU is one of 15 colleges in Ohio that's funded through the program. YSU's disabilities counselor, Bill Coach, says the program can also help students look for internships or part-time jobs while they are in school. Somebody with, uh, with physical limitations uh, might need what's called rehabilitation technology, you know, if they need some sort of equipment to help them overcome a disability. Um, somebody might need job coaching, you know, somebody to, to help them get comfortable in a, in a new work setting. The more traffic he gets, the better for them and the better for us because if they need accommodations here in the classroom, then they can get those too while they're here. We can send students back and forth. Yeah. YSU is teaming up with the Meridian Healthcare Administration and the Mahoning County Mental Health and Recovery Board. The team is working to prevent substance abuse and educate people on mental health issues and coping mechanisms. Their hope is that through working together, they can help our students better manage these issues. YSU alum and prevention specialist Mason Edmond develops prevention programs. And thanks to Edmond's BFA in theater, he is able to add a unique perspective to the project. I graduated uh, from YSU this past spring, spring of 19, and I graduated with a Bachelor in Theater. And um, I think it, it offers, it gives me a unique spin on this position because I bring in some kind of outside-the-box ideas, I guess you could say. Uh, some of the programming that I'm working on, some of the ideas that I've pitched and that are now in motion for this coming spring term uh, involves improv, uh, some kind of theater roots there. Edmund says his main priority is to equip and provide students with tools and resources to use after graduation. Poverty is a nationwide concern, and it's no different here in Youngstown. YSU Students United paired with PEO, the Poverty Awareness Organization of Youngstown, to spotlight this concern. The event began with a food insecurity simulation. The organizers separated students into four groups, each representing a different class. A three-course meal was served to the upper class, while the lower class ate rice and beans. A fourth group of students represented the homeless population and received nothing to eat. Afterwards, st students expressed their reactions. In every single time that we have these topics, we want it to be a student-led discussion because it's important for students to have a discussion amongst themselves so that they're aware. Because we're going to be the leaders of the future, and it's important that we're aware of these almost hot-button to uh, hot topics. An international student is making YSU history. Dina Abdo calls Cairo, Egypt home. Abdo won the prestigious honor of being a Fulbright Scholar. She is the first student to become to YSU with this program. She is pursuing a master's degree in financial economics. After graduating, Abdo hopes to fight against the increasing poverty rates in areas like Northern Africa and the Middle East. YSU housing has reached capacity. The Women's Club right at now, YSU. one out of ten students currently live on campus. Although YSU is known as a commuter college, the addition to the new dormitories can help grow YSU's residential population. Read this week's edition of the Jam Bar to hear more from students who commute and about their experiences. 
sipping wine, and raising funds for YSU students, we can't think of a better combination. Amanda stopped by Woodland Cellars Winery at an event hosted by the YSU Women's Club to talk with some of the attendees. The Women's Club at YSU held a tasteful fundraiser to raise money for female students at the university, providing funds for their college education in times of need. Attendees stopped by Woodland Cellars Winery and Meadery, where they were able to sample various wines and socialize with other members, hoping to expand the organization's membership to better the student body. Four to five students each year receive a scholarship from the Women's Club which usually helps cover a semester's tuition. That one student said that had we not given her the scholarship, she wouldn't be able to continue. And she, she was very emotional because she said everybody second-guessed her. Nobody thought she could go get her degree. And she's like, it made so much to me that you guys actually cared. She didn't have any family with her at the event because all of her family don't live in this area. So she's like, you guys are kind of like our family. She's like, you showed that you care. You showed that you believed in me. YSU holds a connection not only for members of the organization, but also for the own Owner of Woodland Cellars. A YSU alum paired his passion for science with giving back to the YSU organization. Nathan Wilson graduated from YSU with a Bachelor's of Science for high school education in 2011, starting his career as a local high school teacher. While creating friendships with his co-workers, Wilson's vision for brewing beer and wine came to life. Wilson took a step away from teaching and focused his energy on creating his own winery business. We started brewing beer and making wine at one guy's house, then we'd move to the next month, we'd move to another guy's house and drink what we made the month before and start another batch and just go from place to place and uh, that kind of evolved into, well, what's next? What are we going to make next? What's the, something different? And uh, that's when mead came up, the, the honey wine. Uh, so we made that and that really raised some eyebrows and that kind of got the business ball rolling. We're, there's something we could do here. Wilson said he hopes this fundraiser is the first of many with YSU's Women's Club. Amanda Jornt, Jambar TV. Youngstown legend Ray Boom Boom Mancini endured a fair share of punches throughout his boxing career and life journey. The lightweight champ shared his journey with attendees at the Sintofani Symposium. Mancini led the audience from Youngstown to New York to Cleveland and back through stories that shaped him into who he is today. Life is but the journey. It's about the experiences we have along the way, the relationships we make along the way, and you know, so when it's all said and done, you're going to remember the journey, or you should, or you remember certain incidents. It's all about the total, the total journey. You know what I mean? We could have stops along the way. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be, you know, detours along the way. But as long as we get back to where we need to be, this town is everything I am, everything, everything I, I am, everything I ever will be, everything I've ever been. It's because of this town in my family, of course, but this is this is who I am. So I'm born and bred, and um, they, this town has helped make me the, the, the person and, and the champion I was and the person I am. Up next, executive producer Alyssa Weston will sit down with Rosie Brusson, cast member of the Department of Theater and Dance's fall musical Cabaret. Their discussion will give us an inside look on the preparation for the musical, so stay tuned. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. 
We are Youngstown State University and proud. Hey kid, you wanna try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV. Today I'm joined with Rosie Bresson, senior musical theater major and MC of YSU's rendition of Cabaret. Rosie, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. I know opening night is tonight, so um, I wanted to, you know, have you on and ask you a few questions about the show and what the audience can expect. Um, well, Cabaret is set in 1920s Berlin prior to the rise of the Nazi Party. Um, it's a very decadent time period for Berlin. It's very free, very um, just sort of open, and it sort of deals with how people celebrated this freedom, but also how that led to them sort of ignoring the kind of signs of fascism and the Nazi party coming to power eventually. So it's set in the Kit Kat Club, which is where kind of I inhabit. And it's just about sort of the, the people there and, and how their lives interact and how they're changed by, you know, the, the political and social unrest at the time. So it seems like the show's about the Kit Kat Club and everything inside, but also there's this whole other world going on yeah. outside. Um, you play the MC, which is typically played by a man. Tell me why you decided to give this an androgynous twist. Um, I think that having the MC be played by a woman and be a little more androgynous kind of heightens the overall ambiguity of the show and kind of kind of brings out some of the questions that the show itself is asking, kind of about, you know, how the Nazis used, you know, masculinity and, like, very traditional ideals, whereas, like, the Kit Kat Club and, and the rest of Berlin was kind of celebrating, you know, being very free about, you know, their identity, about who they were, about their about their personal lives, et cetera. So I think that, I think that it just sort of heightens those two opposing worlds a little bit as I kind of float through each one. Uh, you're a senior now. You've been involved in the Department of Theater and Dance since your freshman year. So how does this role in the show differ from the other things you've done in the department? Um, I've been really lucky to have played a big variety of roles here. Like last year I did um, two very realistic roles that were you know, both very female. Um, but actually my freshman year, uh, we did a German expressionist play with music called No More Peace in which I did play an androgynous character and which was also kind of a metaphor for uh, Berlin, Germany prior to the rise of the Nazis. So it was actually really cool to kind of revisit that world in, in, in a totally different light and obviously in a totally different show. But it's, it's kind of neat to, to kind of have that as like the bookends on my time here. Um, so the MC has been played by a lot of musical theater legends, people like Alan Cumming, John Stamos, Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, do you feel any pressure to fill in their shoes? Um, I think I feel more pressure just to do the role itself justice. Uh, I try not to really look at their performances a lot because while they're great, obviously, and like a lot of them are big heroes of mine, I, I really wanted to bring my own experiences and my own take on the role. I think just the biggest pressure is really kind of doing doing the character itself justice and the writing justice because I think I think it's a really really important important show an important role to have you know kind of at the forefront uh, you know obviously about a very very you know historic sorry ah uh, can I keep going yeah yeah oh, no, so I mean just because Cabaret is such a well-known show and you're talking about wanting mm. to give the character justice and wanting to do the show justice how will YSU's rendition of it differ from the traditional show that you see on Broadway? Um, I, well, we're, we're going with sort of the 1998 revival, which was kind of, they took it to a very gritty, visceral place, you know, kind of shoved all these ideas in the audience's faces, which is, you know, I, I think very different from, you know, the 1960s version, the 1970s film, you know, with the Bob Fosse choreography and the Liza Minnelli, obviously. 
And I think that we're kind of going along those lines, but I think what we've really done a good job of is finding the really heartfelt moments, the really, you know, authentic moments of love and loss and, you know, and, and joy. And I think what we've really done a good job is bringing the more human qualities out of each of these characters instead of just sort of making it, you know, a big, flashy cabaret. Uh, what can audience members expect from the costumes in the set? Um, I think that the costumes in the set are going to wow them. Uh, our set designer based the, his designs on German ex, uh, ex expressionist paintings of the time. So there's lots of really bright, vivid colors, really interesting you know, portraits of people in different shapes all over the stage. There's a lot of you know, bright red because obviously you know, the underlying Nazi theme. Uh, the costumes are all you know, very elaborate. You know, all the Kit Kat girls have different you know, jewel tones. Um, so I think that people can really, you know, expect to be wowed by, you know, all, all of the design elements. What has been your favorite part of, of working on this show? I think just exploring the world of it. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of ambiguous, especially in the role I'm in. So it's been really fun, you know, to, make, to kind of go in with one idea and then end up finding a completely new one that I never was expecting to find. So it's just been really fun kind of growing into this character and growing into the show. And I think that, I think that hopefully that will translate to, you know, the, the audience. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know the show runs this weekend and next. So can you tell me what type of audience the show is suited for and how we can get tickets? Um, I would say it's, a suit, it's suited for maybe a little bit more of a mature audience, but... You know, while it's a show that will make you think and maybe make you question a lot of things, it does have a lot of entertaining and heartfelt moments. So I think it is one that kind of has something for everyone. And uh, you can get tickets on ysu.tix.com or at the box office on the first floor of Bliss. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you for having me. Thank you. Up next, Abigail will be giving us an inside scoop on arts and entertainment in Youngstown. So stay with us. Penguin Club supports your Youngstown State student-athletes. Thanks to the Penguin Club, our student-athletes are given the chance to win a championship and more importantly, earn a degree. Join the Penguin Club to support YSU and benefit from priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality suites. Be a part of the team behind the teams. Join the Penguin Club and make a difference. Call 330-9411-YSU or go to ysusports.com for more information. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm YN Proud. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana and I am why I'm proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. The McDonough Museum of Art brought one-woman ghost choir performer Krista Uno Lady Ebert to campus. She was featured as part of the Their Muse series, which highlights innovative expressions of contemporary culture. Ebert is a self-taught and relies on her voice, a loop pedal, and a small mixer. I'm constantly inspired by you know interactions with people, other music, nature scenes, um, the artists that I'm influenced by are like Lori Anderson, Devo, Paiwi. Coco Rosie, uh, girl, various girl groups, all the girl groups. <laughs> Swing music and foxtrot dancing greeted Youngstown State University students in Kilcally Center this week in preparation for Penguin Night. 
For today only, flash back to the Roaring Twenties and Kilcali's Hub with swing dance lessons. Local magicians from Allen's Modern Magic and Mind-Bending Mentalism amaze students. Participants have the chance to win prizes in Not Your Granny's Bingo and at the Speakeasy Casino. YSU's Jazz Society, along with the Pit Vipers, will perform live. Also, stu students are encouraged to break out their dance moves for the LED party. Free food and mocktails will also be available, so be sure to bring your YSU ID for this exclusive event tonight from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Youngstown State University Dana School of Music fills the Butler Institute of American Art with melodious sounds. They perform every Wednesday for their Music at Noon concerts. One Accord, a YSU barbershop choir, and guest ensemble, the Dana Chorale, serenaded their audience with popular favorites. Tunes included Goodbye My Coney Island Baby, Let Me Call You Sweetheart, and Down by the Old Mill Stream. With snow on the ground, the performance took a festive turn with silver bells and jingle bells to put the audience in a holiday spirit. The next Music at Noon features the Dana Saxophone Studio recital on November 20th, and now we leave you with this week's Music at Noon. Indianapolis, the heart of hoops hysteria. And beginning in March, the home of the Horizon League Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Eight teams look to reach the horizon and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Semifinal action takes place Monday, March 9th, and Horizon League champions are crowned Tuesday, March 10th. Visit horizonleague.com for more information and to score your tickets today. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. Welcome back to Jambard TV, I'm Ben Lulai. And I'm Dom Joseph. The frustration continues as the Youngstown State football team fell again last Saturday after giving up 56 points for the second week in a row on the road against South Dakota. With the defeat, YSU now holds a record of 5-5 five five overall and a disappointing 1-5 in the conference. Head coach Bo Pelini, who was searching for his 100th win as a YSU's head coach last Saturday, expresses his frustration over the last few games and is taking full responsibility for the team's struggles and says the focus now is strictly on the team. But that was an embarrassment. I mean, that 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 performance on Saturday, and, uh, you know, I apologize to everybody associated with this program. I mean, I, that's that's unacceptable, and and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for it, so... I'm sick about it. We got to do our thing, and we got to execute what we're trying to get done, and because uh, that—that's really what's holding this football team back. I mean, I mean, it's doing the things that they're going to give yourself a chance to win. The Penguins hit the road again tomorrow to face off against Indiana State. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. On Monday, Penguins guard Tyler Pettit named the Horizon League Freshman of the Week for performances against Canisius and Kent State in her debut. Pettit scored 15 points and shot 6 of 11 from the field. Against Kent State, she led the team in points, rebounds, and assists, and remained on the floor for the entire game. Pettit missed last season with an injury and is finally back in action. 
It feels good. I mean, sitting out, having injuries, dealing with injuries like the last two, three years now of my career and stuff like that. I go out every night. And I'm going to play as hard as I can and give it all I got because I learned that it sucks to sit out and not be in the game and have to sit on the bench and watch watch from there. So I'm going to go out there and give it all I got every night and just help the team as much as I can. After the loss to Robert Morris on Wednesday, the Penguins are at home tomorrow and will face off against Eastern Michigan. Tip-off is at 11 a.m. On the men's side, the 78-55 loss to Louisville proved to be a building block going forward. For the team going up against the number five ranked team in the nation was a challenge, but Penguins coach Jared Calhoun was pleased with moments he saw with the team. Um, togetherness. We were together, you know. Like I said, we took a loss, but everybody stuck together, you know, still in good spirits. And I think it's just a learning progress for us. It's difficult. You know, you go from playing a Division three opponent uh, to a, a top four opponent. Um, you know, totally different uh, in your preparation. Uh, I think our bench uh, did a really, really nice job. You know, I've said all along, our team is a little bit older, a little bit more mature. Um, and then we're certainly deeper compared to the last couple years. The Penguins stay on the road with a game against Louisiana Lafayette and return home November 19th for a game against North Carolina Central. A recent study conducted by OnePoll on behalf of Splash Financial surveyed 1,000 undergraduate and 1,000 postgraduates in which 89% said their student loan debt is a financial burden. When asked what they do to erase their student debt, 39% agreed to spend a week in jail. What would you guys do to erase your student loan debt? You know, that's a really good question. I was thinking about this earlier. I think the craziest thing I would do to erase my student loan debt would probably do a 40-foot dive into a pool. I think that would be the craziest thing I'd do. That's the craziest thing, thing you would do? I think that's the craziest thing I would do to erase my student loan debt for sure. I hope you would wow. remain safe in yeah. that process. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, <laughs> I think that would be the wildest thing I could do. Yeah. What about you? Oh, I think the craziest thing I could do would probably get a minimum wage job at Hotheads on campus. Oh, there you go. Hey, that's a good, that's a good idea. I've yeah, been there, done that. I think that. that might help a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, Ben, what would you do to erase Well, for those that know me, they know I'm very reserved. So I would talk to everybody I saw, and that would be very tough for me. Ben, that is. Uh, but we would enjoy it. We would enjoy it. Oh, I do have good things to say sometimes. So. Sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah. Every once in a while, Ben. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that, that would be great, Ben. Mm -hmm. I know I jumped around from school to school for a little bit, so I am. it is going, going to be a struggle. So I would probably spend the week in jail. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Thanks for tuning in to Jambar TV. For more information on stories and additional content, check out our website or pick up a copy of the Jambar Today. I'm Amanda George. And I'm Thomas Kushner. We'll see you next Friday at noon, Penguins. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged.
Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged.